Hai guys, jumpa lagi di Bang Jeket Channel. Saya doain semoga rezeki kamu itu bertambah di samping rezeki yang ada ya. Kali ini guys seru banget guys karena ulasannya berasal dari luar negeri guys tentang IKN. Nah, bagaimana penjelasan orang luar negeri channel luar negeri yang mantap jiwa yang punya 1,6 juta subscriber ini menjelaskan tentang IKN? Mari kita tonton bareng-bareng. This is Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia and home to over 10 million people. It's overcrowded, polluted, and it's literally sinking into the ocean. And this is Nusantara, the future capital city, opening later this year with construction already in full swing. Nusantara isn't ready just yet, but it promises to be a smart forest city. Kota hutan pintar, yes. With a price tag of an estimated 33 billion dollars, it's supposed to be a high-tech metropolis powered by renewables and perfectly blending in with the surrounding environment. In today's video, we're going to look at how Southeast Asia's biggest country is planning to carve out a brand new mega city right from the jungle, and why this is not only beneficial but also problematic. Indonesia's newest city doesn't look like much yet, but it's gonna be a game changer. On a site four times bigger than Jakarta and 40 times empat kali ya, lebih besar dari Jakarta guys, dan 40 kali lebih besar dari Manhattan. It's bigger than Manhattan. Construction is underway on the first of five phases, all of which are due to be completed by 2045. Oh, berarti punya lima fase. It might seem enormous, especially because it's only being built for less than 2 million people. But that's because 65% of the city is going to be green space with forests, gardens, and parks. Another 10% of the city will be taken up by farming, meaning that only one quarter of Nusantara will be covered in buildings. This is all part of Indonesia's target to be carbon neutral by 2060. And Nusantara is a big part of that. It'll be powered entirely by renewables, and 80% of Germany within the city will be by public transport, walking, or cycling. Thanks to a smart public transport system, you're supposed to reach everything you need like shops, restaurants, and so on within 10 minutes, wow. no matter where you live. And the urban Kemanapun kamu pergi, maka 10 menit, guys. Rainforests that weave through the city will make Nusantara feel more like something out of Avatar mm. than real life. If the plans are anything to go by, doesn't look too bad. At first glance, Nusantara looks like a paradise, perhaps even too good to be true. So to understand it properly, let's zoom out for a second and look at why exactly it's being built in the first place. Indonesia is an island nation, otherwise known as an archipelago. In fact, it's actually the biggest archipelago in the world, with over 17,000 individual islands. Since the 1600s, the capital city has been here, on the north coast of the island of Java. But Jakarta was never built to house the 10 million million people that live there today. 13 separate rivers run through Jakarta, and flooding is a massive problem. This is made even worse by poor water management. A large percentage of the population relies on groundwater, which also comes from wells. These wells draw water from far below the city, weakening the earth and causing the ground to shift underfoot. As a result, Jakarta... Itulah yang bikin Jakarta tuh makin lama makin turun, guys. Sehingga sekarang, ya kan? Lebih tinggi laut daripada Jakarta, guys. It's actually sinking into the ocean. The speed varies, but some neighborhoods sink as many as 11 so, inches a year, tahun. making it the fastest sinking city hmm. in the world. In fact, kota yang paling cepat tenggelam di dunia, ya Jakarta, guys. 11 inci per tahun. 40% of Jakarta is already below sea level, and with oceans set to continue rising, Jakarta has a major problem on its hands. Given this whole situation, Indonesia decided to build a new capital city, over 700 miles away, right in the middle of the jungle. This is the island of Borneo. It's the third largest island on the planet, and it's covered by a massive rainforest. The island is split between Malaysia and Brunei in the north and Indonesia in the south. And over here, in a region called East Kalimantan, is where Nusantara is being built. But why here? Well, the location is actually more central to Indonesia. This should allow better connectivity between the government and the many parts of the country. At the same time, it'll also redistribute resources and people away from the island of Java, which currently makes up over 60% of the national economy. East Kalimantan is also better protected from natural disasters like floods and earthquakes that affect much of the country. 
On top of that, the rainforest offers an enormous amount of natural resources, as well as the natural beauty and biodiversity. Wow. There's also just a lot more space, something that's severely lacking in Jakarta. It's been overcrowded and sinking for decades now, which might make you wonder, why has it taken so long to start this process? Well, the idea of moving the capital isn't actually a new one. It was first discussed way back in the 1950s, but no one would... Berarti rencana udah lama, yaitu tahun 1950-an, guys. Tapi pertanyaannya dari mana YouTuber ini tahu, ya kan? Pasti dia udah ngorek informasi entah kemana-mana, ya kan? was prepared to push for it as much as the current president, Joko Widodo. Widodo, who was a furniture maker before getting into politics, became the governor of Jakarta in 2012. But it wasn't until he was elected president in 2014 that he could really make progress on his dream of a new Indonesian capital. Finally, in 2019, he officially announced the plan to relocate. So what is the vision for this new capital? 300 different companies actually submitted designs for Nusantara, but it was an Indonesian architecture and design firm, Urban Plus, who were eventually selected to design the majority of the city. Their vision, to create a city that works with the natural environment rather than against it. A smart urban landscape that captures the biodiversity of Indonesia, as well as its rich cultural heritage. Nusantara actually means archipelago, and a look around the city clearly shows how the designers have tried to capture the identity of the island nation. So let's take a look at some design details. Elevated walkways will provide links between transport hubs, allowing residents to access the fully electric public transport system and avoid the hilly jungle terrain. These walkways, along with some of the buildings that are on stilts, will allow better airflow and rainwater dispersal throughout the city. It sounds rather elaborate to put buildings on stilts, but this is nothing new in Indonesia. Many homes are raised above the ground to protect them from flooding. And the same technique is used here in Nusantara as well. And that's not all. At the heart of the city is the Presidential Palace. No, this yeah, unique man. masterpiece will be in the shape of Garuda, a mythical bird and the national symbol of Indonesia. There's also a huge statue of it in Bali, which we've already featured in our video about the world's tallest statues. The Garuda represents knowledge, power, and bravery and its giant glass wingspan will stretch out for 177 meters as it towers above Nusantara. Along this long straight road through the middle of the city, it'll certainly stand out. Then there's the Vice Presidential Palace, which was actually designed as part of an open competition run by the government, with the winning design coming from a company called Shao. Despite its more modern appearance, the design was actually selected thanks to its connection with indigenous Indonesian architecture. It's based on a classic building known as a longhouse and uses traditional design features that split the building into three separate parts. All these renders show that the plan for the city is to integrate it into nature and preserve many green spaces. And that's definitely an advantage compared to many existing cities. They can allocate the space entirely from scratch. For a city of this size, it would definitely be a new approach if Indonesia is actually able to build it. So how exactly do they plan to realize this massive undertaking? The project has been split into five phases and construction is already underway, though the deadlines are pretty tight. As we will see, certain areas such as the governmental zone will take priority and infrastructure will be upgraded as the city grows in line with the later phases. The first and perhaps the most ambitious phase has a timeline of only two years and is scheduled to be finished later this year. President Widodo, who leaves office in October, has Berarti yang sangat ketat waktunya itu fase pertama, guys. Has made Nusantara his legacy and plans to officially inaugurate the city with the opening of the presidential palace on Indonesian Independence Day, August 17th. In the first phase, the governmental zone is being carved out of the jungle. On top of that, all the very basic infrastructure needs to be put in place before anyone can actually move in. That means roads, electricity, and water supply, as well as a core public transport system. During phase one, the focus is on the so-called governmental zone, made up of government offices, the palaces, and buildings for branches of the army and police. The next phases of construction will have a little bit more time to come together, with four to five years planned for each separate stage. Phase two will see big developments in what's called mixed use areas and is scheduled to be finished later this year. This means that areas will be developed for industry and business as well as educational institutions, food, and retail. By the end of this phase in 2029, the government plans for 1.2 million people to have relocated to Nusantara.
tahun 2029 rencananya bakal 1,7 juta orang udah pindah kemari guys dan di fase 2 ya belum lagi fase 3 guys ini ini berlangsung sampai fase 5 sampai menjadi kota besar guys bukan cuma jadi kantor negara doang guys ya jadi di fase 5 itu udah sempurna guys jadi kota besar kota industri ya kan kota pemerintahan lengkap sudah guys Alright, kind of hard to believe when you look at the building site that's standing there today. In only five years, 1.2 million people are going to live here. Do you even think that's possible? Phase three, starting in 2030, will see the development of a mass transportation system, as well as the expansion of waste and water management projects, and a focus on the economic development of local businesses. Regional railway networks will be laid as part of phase four, as well as an extension of education and health services due to the projected population increase. The final phase of construction construction due for completion in time for the 100th anniversary of Indonesian independence in 2045 will involve more industrial development and a focus on stable population growth with a planned 1.9 million residents. That's if everything goes to plan though. With only a few months to go until the official opening, it's already being talked about that meeting the deadlines might be tough. Construction has been slower than planned due to severe tropical weather and supply chain issues. Gathering all the necessary resources to build a city from scratch isn't easy, especially in this jungle location. And this is where the multiple issues arise. If you enjoyed this video so far, do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it and thanks for your support. So let's take a look at the four major points of criticism and problems. Firstly, there have been a lot of illegal mining operations in this area. East Kalimantan has enormous reserves of natural resources like coal. Let's take a look at the four major bring all the necessary resources. Wow, ternyata seperti itu guys ya. Bahkan saya sendiri nggak tahu guys, ternyata IKN itu punya lima fase ya. Fase pertama tahun ini habis kemudian fase kedua sampai tahun 2029 guys kemudian fase 3 2030 sampai 2035 fase pertama yaitu pembangunan kantor pemerintahan ya kan? dan itu tahun ini habis bahkan Pak Jokowi udah pindah sekarang guys ya kemudian di fase kedua itu guys fase industri dari tahun 2026 sampai tahun 2029 itu fase industri termasuk pendidikan kemudian apa guys lupa dan direncanakan di tahun 2029 ya orang-orang udah pindah ke IKN sekitar 1,2 juta orang guys kemudian tahun 2030 sampai 2035 itu fase pembuatan transportasi tapi jelas ini jangka panjang guys sampai tahun 2050 IKN ini guys baru dia sempurna guys wow ini amazing guys ya jadi buat yang belum tahu ini kayaknya wajib nonton di mana tahap-tahapnya dan apa rencananya dan penyebab dan mengapa dibangun IKN. Wow, mantap juga guys. Enggak nyangka banget guys, ternyata info selengkap ini malah kita dapatkan dari channel luar negeri guys, yaitu dari Mega Buil ya, yang sekarang punya 1, 16 juta subscriber guys. Nah, bagaimana menurut pendapat kamu? Silakan berikan tanggapan, sanggahan, opini dan kritik di kolom komentar semoga bermanfaat. Bagi kita semua, saya cukupkan sampai sini. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ciao.